Well, um, welcome to the uh, area-wide plan uh, public meeting for the Island District and Under the Hill. And um, so how about if we go around and um, introduce ourselves and our uh, interest or uh, role in the community and we can start around the, uh, around the table and then go through the grid on the Zoom. Deb Fox, and I'm a resident here in Bellows Falls. David Kersalit, I'm a resident here in Bellows Falls. Marcia Stern, I'm a resident in Bellows Falls. Uh, Rick Cowan, I'm a uh, resident of Cambridgeport and also a member of the select board. My name's uh, Taylor Shulda, I'm with Stevens and Associates and we're leading some of the planning studies on this. Uh, and then on the screen, let's see, there's, um, uh, oh, just got blocked there by the chat. Um, <clears throat> uh, looks like um, uh, Sue, Robert, Colin, uh, Susan, Elijah, and Betsy. If you want to um, go around in that order and um, just uh, say who you are and your uh, interest role. Okay, I'll start. I don't know if I'm Susan or Sue, but uh, Sue, Susan Westa from the Wyndham Regional Commission. And we are funding this project through one of our Brownfields assessment grants. Great. Um, hi, I'm Robert McBride, um, director of the Rocky M Arts Museum project in Bellows Falls, and also um, owner of property on Canal Street, and very interested in the project and development of the downtown. I'm Colin Bratton. I also work for the Wyndham Regional Commission. <clears throat> Elijah Zimmer, uh, Rocky Town Select Board, uh, BIFTA Board, uh, Downtown Design Committee Chair, and Historical Commission. <laughs> okay, well, I guess, um, I guess we're, we're good to go. We could get started. Um, and uh, <clears throat> uh, Mark Westa, who's our um, uh, design guy with Stevens Associates leading the, um, uh, the area-wide planning study. Um, Thanks, Gary. Yeah. yeah, Mark Westa with Stevens and Associates. I'm a landscape architect uh, working on this planning project. Um, just to kind of summarize what, what we're gonna to do today, um, most people have an agenda. Um, if not, uh, if you're on screen, you might have seen one already. Uh, but basically, go through a little bit of a welcome, which we're working on right now. Uh, talk about the status of our planning effort, including showing you some of the mapping we've been doing and some of the thinking that that's leading to. Uh, there's a session where we're gonna to try to get some input, uh, which has worked fairly well, even though we're kind of in person and online, but we've had some really good discussions in some earlier meetings today. And um, then we'll have a time when we'll actually look at some drawings and we have a bit of a model over here and we'll kind of share that and, and work on that together. So those are the, that's kind of the agenda. Um, as far as where we're at in the project, uh, we've, we've been collecting data. We went on a nice site walk We've done some mapping. Our other consultant, Novus, uh, who works on environmental kind of brownfields issues, is, uh, has done quite a bit of um, sort of environmental brownfields, you know, contamination studies. And um, we're, we're kind of seeing where we are. And then the next steps in the future will be to think about sort of actually lay, laying out some plans and some conceptual options for the project. Um, one thing I did want to mention is if you're not speaking, it's probably helpful to mute your mic. Um, so if everybody could check that just so to keep the uh, background noise down to a minimum. Uh, Gary, do you want to talk about the purpose a little bit of the study? So um, this is the, the first of three uh, 
uh, public meetings in the uh, planning process. And <clears throat> um, uh, one of the things about the area-wide plans is that um, uh, even though we start with uh, uh, visioning and a high level, uh, what people want to see, um, uh, unlike some um, like uh, feasibility assessments, they are implementable plans. And if you, um, you know, follow some different Vermont towns, uh, St. Albans, Bennington, uh, area-wide plans uh, led to the project implementation and the funding through a um, uh, wide variety of uh, funding stack, including TIF districts. Um, <clears throat> So uh, at, the, at the end of this process, our next step, our, um, uh, our goal is to um, be implementing this process, the, uh, the public aspects identified and then um, leading into, um, we're hoping up to, uh, to five of the uh, development projects that uh, we identify in this plan. Um, so th uh, thanks for being here and uh, participating. We're gonna have Taylor share the screen. And I should say just one important note is, you know, if anybody's having trouble seeing or hearing, uh, please let us know. You know, it's a little challenging here, um, but it's obviously critical that everybody can see and hear as best they can. So um, just, just flag us down if you need to. So we do have quite a series of maps here. We have sort of a historic map. We have some base maps. We have some, you know, larger maps. This is the one that we're going to kind of start with and talk to, to get sorry, sort of oriented to the site. Um, you'll notice that it's sort of washed out, um, sort of grayed out. That's on purpose so that we can go ahead and draw over the top of it. And what we're drawing and thinking about is legible to everybody. And we'll kind of continue to use that as we get into more of the design and planning aspects of the project. Go to the next one. Yeah, thanks. So this, this map and hopefully down in the lower left, you can see sort of see the numbers and the you know, titles next to them. What we're talking about here are some of the bigger assets of the site as we see them from sort of a planning point of view. You know, what are the things that might drive us in one direction or the other? So, and, and these are assets and later we'll talk about some things that are more uh, constraining us. Um, so this first one is the power canal. And the second one is sort of the rapids and you know, the river on the opposite side. Both of those, obviously the connection to water, the activity, the movement can be really visually interesting, um, just kind of exciting places to be, something uh, of value to us. Number three is the actual kind of passenger rail. Obviously having that near potential development, potential housing, potential mixed use development um, can be a real benefit, something that we might, might want to look at and sort of include in the, um, any kind of designs that we do. Freight rail, very strong. You know, obviously several of the tracks really are dedicated to freight rail and do a lot with that. The Waypoint Center um, attracts visitors, a strong kind of meeting place uh, used for all kinds of purposes, something that we probably want to build on as we go forward. Then there's uh, the bridges. So there's the Depot Street Bridge, the Vilas Bridge, and the Bridge Bay Bridge. And all of those are, you know, really important things. They, they have many benefits. We know that there's concerns with the bridge, but each one of those, you know, can provide access or, um, you know, can, can serve a purpose in the future. So we're, we're really looking into those. Uh, number nine is the Abenaki, Abenaki petroglyphs, um, a really an important cultural feature of the area. And, you know, the Abenaki heritage on the island and in the community, are things that we want to think about and you know work with. There's the square right outside the door here. Um, the adjacency of kind of the town here, you know, downtown area to anything that we do on the island is very interesting and can be a very powerful connection. Um, so another real good asset. The views, both kind of off to the east and towards the mountain or to the west and kind of into town and the steeples and the you know, kind of built environment are very interesting. 
And then number 12 is sort of access to the riverfront trail. So does anybody have any questions about that or comments, something we missed, something we should add to that general list right off the bat? We, we can always come back, so um, we'll, we'll keep going. So this one is another sort of set of assets. We kind of define these as visual assets more. I mean, obviously some of the things we talked about before related to this, or maybe placemaking asset, assets, but things that really um, add to the, just the character of the place. So these include the railroad cars, the train station, the rail station, all of those things up in that corner, you know, really, add to the character of the island. They're important parts of the history. Um, there's the Creamery building, another you know, important asset. The Vilas Bridge, just the visual character of it is interesting. The Waypoint Center again, again, the, the design of it, the character of it is interesting. Um, and then sort of that cluster of a studio, um, the Times building and the upper mill and, and even the lower mill add a lot of kind of interest and, and character that to that spot. And then the post office and some of the historic mill buildings in that kind of lower area. So I guess we'll keep on going. All right, so this map is a bit more about sort of constraints, things that may limit development, um, things to be you know watchful of. Um, there's a couple colors going on here. It, it might be a little difficult to see, but the ones, there's a series that are in a thinner red pen and have some kind of striping across it. And then there's a thicker orange pen, a little hard to see on the screen. The red really means sort of, we probably aren't gonna move it. It's, it's permanent. Um, we don't have a lot of control over it. So th those include things like the dam, number one up there. And then there's areas that maybe could be, you know, even though we know this might be difficult, there's ways that we might change them or affect them to kind of be a benefit to us. So things like the rail yard, um, you know, it's, it's has some hazard, hazardous materials there. It's owned by the state. It's, you know, parts of it are used quite a bit. Um, but maybe some of the land's available for a use. Um, maybe it could be solar. Maybe there's a way to access some of the river in that area. Um, might seem unlikely, but we're not gonna write it off at first. We're gonna pursue what the possibilities could be there. Um, there's number four, the power canal. Um, again, you know, it's in use. It's, it's kind of a permanent thing, but could we change the edges of it? Could we build over the top of it? You know, what are some of the options there? So. Um, marking it off as kind of a constraint, but not as strong as some of the others. And that leads to five and six, which are, you know, the sort of trans transformer switchyard substation area related to power and the actual hydro facility. Um, so those are, you know, highly used, um, per, more or less permanent structures from our kind of planning point of view. And this one talks a little bit about, you know, sort of the, the buildings on the site. And it does a couple things here. Um, the ones in orange, we're really talking about sort of private property and, um, or, or pri buildings owned on private property. So you can get a sense of the massing of the buildings, which is pretty interesting, um, both from the point of view of some of the density and places it makes, but also some of the openness and, you know, uh, land that might be available. Um, and I guess the other thing is, this is also in that sort of orange color. So we understand that these are private entities and you know the interests of the landowner or the property owner need to be considered. But at the same time in a planning study, we're gonna explore options that would include these um, and, and hopefully develop some plans that would interest these people, these, these landowners or business owners. and um, you know, make it so that they want to be included in this, in this study, if you will. 
maybe we should stop there for a second and just ask if anybody had anything they wanted to discuss or clarify about any of those. No? I do have one question. Yeah. Um, I know the... One question regarding the uh, property around the rail yard. Um, I know the passenger station is privately owned, but on state land and just the opposite with the freight. Um, is that, or do you have a map showing what, what <coughs> private property is available? We, um, we, we don't. I mean, we haven't mapped it in that way. We, we could, um, but as I said, we're at this point, we're kind of exploring big <laughs> ideas and not let, trying not to let too many things like hamper our thoughts with the, with the knowledge that that is critical and important. All right, so let's go to the next. Um, so this is sort of a way to start to think about the, the project area that we've been working on. Um, when, when you start on a project like this, there's a lot of land, there's a lot of complexity, there's a lot of issues. We kind of ran through some of those, the positives and the negatives. Um, one thing we like to do is start to break the area down into chunks that are more manageable, that make sense to us, that we might treat in unique ways or study separately in kind of um, smaller studies. So these include sort of the rail yards to the north and then the rail, rail yards to the south there a little bit. So that would be A and B. C is the waypoint center. Um, D is really kind of the core or center of the island. E is the Coda and Coda land. Um, F is an area kind of around the canal. And you can see that some of these circles sort of overlap each other because we're thinking about them sort of broadly. Um, and that leaves G, which is the mill area, the upper mill and the lower mill, and then H, the connection to the riverfront trail. And many of these we know, you know, would most likely stay similar to they are, you know, if Coda and Coda wants to keep being Coda and Coda, then they're gonna be there. Um, on the other hand, some of the other places might be able to be changed, designed, new ideas put forward, et cetera. So those are, the, those are kind of the planning study areas that we're thinking about as far as, you know, just a way to break down the site and consider different areas a little more clearly. And we should probably switch to the Bettina's slides now. There you go. So our partner Nobis um, was here in the afternoon and, and helped describe these slides quite a bit. They've been doing uh, quite a bit of inventory on the land, the history of the land, brownfields related issues. Um, there's a fairly large map on the table right over there that um, ha yeah, has some of this description in it. Um, we'll, we'll get Bettina to come back and talk to us more about this, but we can just kind of run through these quickly. Uh, there's obviously 44 parcels on the 47 acres that make up the study area. And that includes, you know, kind of the both parts sort of under the hill and the island. Um, parcel size vary quite a bit. Many are small, but then there's some one and two acres and then a few larger ones. Quite a bit of different owners. 37 private lots, six town lots, and a couple state lots. And then of course the post office. Uh, quite a big chunk, almost half of the study area is made up of the rail parcel and the hydro dam parcel. So, you know, there's, there's limits there. Um, but on the other hand, it leaves quite a bit of land available to us. Um, there are some restrictions, you know, based on brown fields on three of the parcels. And then, um, there's 20 parcels within the sort of historic district, district designation. So those are both things that will control or influence some of our decisions as we, as we think about this. Um, there is shallow bedrock, no surprise, given the amount of rock around here. Um, 
And there are quite a few sort of designated brownfield sites, 12 by Vermont DC, um, five other Vermont ones or US EPA designated brownfield sites. So, so quite a, quite a, you know, not surprising given the industrial history of the site um, that there's quite a bit of contamination out there. Some of it's been cleaned up and is, is being addressed, but some of it is, is still out there. Any questions about that part? I have one question, if you can hear me okay. We can. This is Betsy Thurston with Abellas Falls Downtown Development Alliance. Um, I just wondered about the land use restrictions. Could you explain those three parcels, what Wayside is and 10 Bridge Street substation a little more? I would actually have a bit of a hard time really explaining them other than to say that um, because of their brownfields condition, there are sort of controls on the use of the property as far as, um, you know, sort of digging into the ground and the way that we would use it. It doesn't eliminate them, but um, it does kind of control some of the uses that would be on it. I'm sorry, I guess I just, I wanted to know where they were, what parcels those were. Oh, where they were? Um, Thank you. Well, I think that one map is up there. Um, if you go over a couple more slides. Yeah. So Wyman I, Flint is down by the, um, under the hill area. Yeah, we're trying to get, yeah, we're trying to get her map up. And then Robert's so, paper mills in the middle of the island. Right. So Robertson's in the middle. If you pull that down a little bit, Taylor. Yep. The big green field, the green yep. area. Yep, that one. And then Wyman Flint is under the hill. Yep. So down. Yep, pull that over. Uh, yeah, a little more. Down, yeah, down there. Yeah, mm -hmm. yes. And then the last one is 10 Bridge Street, which is... Yeah, I don't know. Is that on the other end? So 10 Bridge Street is right behind the hotel. Um, oh. Right. Oh. Okay, I see that. And what about Wayside? Is that the waypoint? The, way, the Waypoint Center? Well, it says Wayside. Wayside. I think that's the, the... Yeah. I think, unfortunately, because Bettina is not here, we can't give you a whole lot more information right now, but I hope that helps to answer your question. Thank you. Um, I was just saying that that um, kind of shows our, our planning and thinking to this point, um, really developing information, trying to understand it better, trying to break it down in a way that makes sense to us and that we can communicate to other people. <laughs> and then from that, we will be going forward um, to start to think about planning and design studies based on that. Yes, sir. Uh, this is a question for Gary. Is it true that the uh, residential uses are not uh, zoned on the island? So, the, so they are zoned as accessory uses. So you could have a mixed use development with a commercial on the first floor and um, condos above it, um, but you couldn't have just a housing neighborhood there and nothing else. Okay, so no kind of condos or that sort of thing. Yes, you can have Con condos. Condos by themselves, not as part of a commercial entity. Right, as an accessible, yeah, that's correct, yes. 
All right, Taylor, you want to go on to the map with the ideas? There we go. So this, this portion of the time, what we're really trying to do is get people to express their opinions about a variety of ideas of what could be used, you know, on the site, um, what would be interesting and useful and, and create, you know, sort of a new uh, area out there. Um, hopefully all of you saw this as part of the kind of invitation to come to the meeting. Often in a public meeting, we would have people sort of vote on this using dots or other mechanisms to kind of gauge interest in different things. We can't really do that here. Um, so in the last couple of meetings, we've just had a discussion. It's worked out quite well. Um, Taylor, could you zoom in on that a little bit? Yeah, maybe a little more. We'll, we'll make it big enough so we can sort of see it, hopefully, and then we can pan it around a little bit. Um, but the real idea here is that either from these cues that we're kind of helping you to think about or your own opinions, um, you express some of the things that you might like to see on this site. Um, so any, any volunteers to go first? Uh, but it's, I just had a question for plan, basically. Is someday we might reopen the wireless bridge. And the Bridge Street Bridge will have to be dealt with. But assuming those are all usable, how would that, that might change things going forward on the island. Um, so we, I don't know how much you've taken that into consideration, the reopening of the wireless bridge. Well, we know it's possible, um, <laughs> certainly. And we know that there may be a new bridge, possibly. Um, so I guess what I would say at this point is we know these things. We're gonna do some planning and design studies for some of them, something like uh, the opening of the Vilas Bridge won't make a difference for a certain use, might, might not matter. For another use, it might be critical. So it, it all depends on kind of what we're looking at and what we're thinking about. And, and definitely if we come to a preferred plan, like a single plan, it, it might almost be like, well, this will, for this plan to be successful, the Vilas Bridge needs to be open or we might say, we don't know that for sure that that's ha gonna happen. So we don't even wanna go in that direction, right? So it's, it's something we know about and we will take into consideration. Uh, the other question of sort of what you would like to see here, what, what this place could be. Anybody want to talk about an idea they like? Something that could be a cornerstone for the redevelopment of this area? Are we talking about the Robbie lot or the whole island? We're talking about the whole island. And strictly the island. Under the hill also, so down to um, a TLR, Gristmill, Wyman Flint, um, that whole area up to the historic riverfront park. Okay. Well, first of all, I think we should look at, what, at what's there that needs to be helped to stay there, and that's the depot. Um, there were all kinds of ideas about Robbie Paper that, of course, no longer can be, I'll do my Debbie Downer, 
we lost our opportunity with Robbie Paper, all the things we could have done there. Um, I'm, I'm Kathy Bergman, by the way. I'm, I'm president of the BFHS, the Bells Falls. Okay, I got that out of the way. Um, <laughs> I would like to see more residential things happening on the island than a mixture of residential and um, industrial things happening on the island. Um, I came to this meeting because I thought we were gonna be talking about what we have already in place. Um, so I'm, I guess I was confused. Uh, yeah, this is a fairly new study that we just, yeah. we kind of just started working on. So I'm not sure I should actually stay. <laughs> um, I, I saw the things around the picture, around the idea and it was saying things like uh, conservation and we were talking about views and all this stuff. And I was going to throw in the things that we bring to the village with the Riverfront Park. And that was some of the stuff I was gonna share. So I'm not sure that this is the place for me to do that. Well, Kathy, this is Robert it, McBride. This is Robert I know, McBride. I know. I know. And I think you should stay on the meeting. I mean, I think, you know, you're a stakeholder that has an interest in things that currently exist. And I think, you know, that perspective, but also bringing possibilities. Um, you know, I think that the Robertson Paper Mill, that now that it's a lot, we look at that as what's the opportunity there. I look at it like, I'm not gonna look behind, I'm gonna look forward for opportunity. I, yes, I also I agree know. that I think there's, I, I am a big supporter of the possibility of kind of housing because I think housing stabilizes areas. It creates 24 hour policing and a mixture of housing commercial uh, would extend our downtown. I think one of the great overviews of our whole village in these areas is the walkability. This, you know, that's a huge asset to the community, the walkability of our community and those, the island to the downtown and that. And, um, and I think the train, the potential between passenger and rail, it is a huge asset also, not only uh, economically, but because there's a huge amount, there's a, a niche market of people that love trains. <laughs> and you could market this area and housing to people that love trains, you know. So I think the experiential and the walkability of this is a, a huge asset to this, this area. Yeah, I agree with that. We've talked about that before. Yep. So, Kathy, your list, I think, is totally appropriate. It um, goes to the character of the neighborhood. That it's, it's part of the whole draw of that area. We um, Go, go for it with your historic park. Uh, well, the reason we developed the park was there was no access for one thing for the village to the Connecticut River. And we thought that, again, somebody had mentioned that, was, that we don't have a green. Uh, and we thought that this was one way we could supply the village with green space. And that was one, another reason that we developed the, the Riverfront Park. And it just grew from there. And sometimes we feel like we're not part of the village anymore. We're not part of the square. And in reality, we're right there off the square. Um, when, I, when I sat through the beginning of the meeting earlier today, I'm thinking, gee, I don't feel like part of this study either. <laughs> and I'm just thinking, you know, we put over a decade and a half into that park and um, there's people in the community and part of this is our own fault that don't even know it exists there. But um, I, I do want to see the island developed. I have from meetings I went to 20 years ago to see things developed on the island. Um, I have a long history of that. But 
the riverfront park was developed for a lot of the same reasons you're wanting to, to develop the island at this point. And um, I don't know, I guess I just kind of felt left out with this plan. And um, we have provided a lot of the things that you're looking to provide with the island, I guess is what I'm saying, except for the things we can't because of the brownfields such as housing and that sort of thing. So we went this direction. So Robert said it much nicer than I can say it, but we've talked about this for a long time. So it's time for somebody else to speak. Uh, Kathy, I, I really wholeheartedly agree with you that we should be looking at the, the assets that we already have um, as an important component of this. Um, but it's looking at how what we are, what is already existing, can be integrated into a full plan. How we can make um, make those part of something. Um, how how they can become part of a, a sustainable uh, development. Um, but they are they're very vital resources, and they should be included uh, in the study everything that we already have here on site. Yeah, the, and, I, and I, I know what the situation is and I know what you're saying. And we are, uh, the Wyman Flint is going to be part of um, a project that Gary's involved with that's going to really tie under the hill with the square and the island. And I'm sure I don't know if Gary's talked about it or people know about it, but it's a long-term thing where the TLR, the Wyman Flint, tie together, which will tie the grist mill and the riverfront park to the square. And it, it's a project that's very exciting. So I don't know how much I'm supposed to say, Gary. <laughs> I'm relatively new to Bellows Falls, but uh, is that on? Yeah. Um, I love the Riverfront Park. I discovered it right away, and I discovered that it's really underutilized, and a lot of people never heard of it. And I'm wondering if part of the part of something that could be in the Riverfront Park and beyond it would be something that I've seen in a number of cities, which is outdoor exercise equipment, you know, stationary equipment that, and that would attract a lot of people that are into fitness and what have you, and bring more people down there. Um, right now, we're in the process of putting up a kiosk, which we felt was important. And um, <laughs> because of the brownfields, we're having a hard time finding out how to put it up because we can't dig in the earth without $5,000 worth of engineering studies. But um, that's an interesting um, idea. I, it's never been brought before us before. I'll have to mention it to the board. Thank you. I think um, we've, in some of the earlier discussions, we've heard a lot about walking and connectivity and more trails and, you know, the idea of having things like active exercise areas. They could, you know, be small enclaves or places with a variety of equipment. It would be great. Or yeah. there could be, or there's other, you know, ideas about cultural um, places along the walks, things like that. So. We'll be looking at all of those types of ideas. That's great. Does anybody want to talk about a different aspect of the, you know, images on the screen or other ideas that they, you know, excite them or of interest to them? I'd like to say a few things about the rail um, aspect of it. I mean, we have a really unique opportunity with the island, uh, not only as potential industrial uh, development, but uh, that's where we, we receive people as well. And I don't think we do a very good job yet with marketing in-state travel to Bellows Falls. This is a perfect spot for some people to come from the north, down from Burlington, spend a day. And with these kinds of plans and the walkability, I think we've got a lot of potential there uh, for that. So that's where I'd like to see more of that energy go and willing to be on a committee for that. I don't know how much I mentioned this, but you know, when we do look at 
at conceptual plans, oftentimes we sort of focus on an idea, at least to start. And, you know, that might be a starting place, like start at the train station, think about how to connect out from there and see where that leads. And then maybe another plan is more about mixed use and you see where that leads. And then all of a sudden you go, wait, those two things can perfectly overlay each other and do both. So that's a great idea. I think for some of the folks that weren't there earlier at the afternoon session, Great River was here. And I think one of the more exciting conversations we had was the possibility of looking at development possibilities on the island that might supplement their current hydro program. Batteries, other types of ways for them to store electricity and then release it during high demand periods. Um, there's real opportunity there for them to do some things which would be wonderful not only for the electric grid, which is going to be beneficial to all of us, but also you know, for us in terms of diversifying and improving our tax base. So those kinds of things were good to hear and I think exciting and, and hopefully will, will lead us to you know, more productive conversations um, with the hydro. So I thought that was, was a, a very good point from this afternoon's conversation, so. That was really helpful when they talked about that. Uh, I was questioning, um, would, solar was mentioned earlier. With brownfields, one of the um, encouraged uses for brownfields, I guess, is solar because you don't have to penetrate the earth and dig stuff. But it's a pretty passive and it's not terribly attractive. Is there, uh, has that been weighed in this plan at all? Because it looks like there's a lot of space, particularly in the rail yard where it's just dead, it's a dead zone. Um, would that be yeah. possible? Yeah, I would say we haven't gotten to sort of the weighing yet. It, you know, we're, we're more trying to understand the existing condition and what's there and collect ideas. And the weighing will sort of be the next phase, you know. And, and the way I think about that is you, you draw up ideas and, me, you know, sort of have some measured measurements and start to ask people, well, would, what would you think of solar here? And they might say no, but if we put it over here, that would be okay. And mm -hmm. that's when we would, that's kind of how we would work on that. Great, thanks. But I don't think all the, pass, all the solar has to be passive, Rick. I've seen it used in parking lots where it's, you know, almost a cover. Oh, that's right, a roof. And then, you know, there's all sorts of advantages to a Vermont winter to have a solar array above your car parked outdoors. <laughs> that's true. As Good. somebody who parked their car in a driveway all winter. <laughs> and shoveled so, it off. <laughs> and, and I yeah chunked off the ice so I think there's lots of ways we can look at that and there are places down there that That's also benefits you know the rail as we've talked about the passenger rail which we had talked about extensions possibilities of ski trains and other types of things not just the Montreal or an Amtrak but other ways to really attract people yep. and take advantage of some of the area you know some of our assets so I think those conversations were very exciting today too great The thought. Uh, there used to be an outdoor adventure place in the Flatiron Building one time, uh, and they were probably a little ahead of their time. But it's possible the island could be used as a base for somebody who was interested in that kind of business. That's a great idea. Cool. So that that was in the past, and it's no longer with us. The adventure. I think right now we make mountain bikes and knives, I think. Oh, okay. The two of the things, which sort of gets to that same concept. The, the, the Adventure Center was, but was very successful. It was where the Flatiron Exchange uh, coffee shop is. And um, the uh, beautiful shop inside, but they made their, uh, their cash, their profit from adventure camps. So they would lead groups of uh, kayaking into the hills, beautiful... Um, uh, whitewater streams, <clears throat> um, remote lakes, and then um, uh, it was it was 2011, and uh, they had their whole season of full camps booked out. Um, and then uh, Irene wiped out the the rivers, the riverbeds, the roads. You couldn't even drive. Uh, um, <laughs> they were helicoptering in food to people who lived in these places, and. Um, so they had to give back their down payments to everyone from the camps. They couldn't run any of their adventure camps. And they, um, 
they were in the hole. Uh, it doesn't sound like a lot for, for a small business. I, I don't know, it was like $40,000 or something. And they just, um, you know, closed their doors and, and ran and hid. They were skunked. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, <clears throat> but, but the, it showed the interest in it. They, every, everything they did was booked months ahead full. I mean, they were uh, very successful with that. And they're allowed to, to have a beautiful shop downtown that, didn't necessarily make money in the retail store, but um, <clears throat> at any rate, so just to um, Mr. Kersler's uh, point, that they would be, you know, um, successful with their riverfront access. And um, just because Kathy was talking about it, I just wanted to take a minute to maybe talk about how um, previous planning efforts fit into this and why we're doing this, even though, you know, there's a train station study that talks about what to do with the station that um, you know the V-Trans has and there's a Connecticut River Heritage study that talks about I think this is what Kathy was referring to you know an exciting vision for the riverfront and that's um, the riverfront park came out of that plan um, uh, but but just because you uh, so there's, there's plans with designs in them but that doesn't mean that they, you can implement them it doesn't mean that there's enough um, how they fit with the, um, for example, the Connecticut River Heritage Center doesn't work because you can't even access it. You don't, uh, you don't currently have safe access uh, to the riverfront. So I think part of what Kathy's referring to is there's, you know, part of the Wyman Flint is crumbling and could be uh, given to right of ways for a road to access the riverfront that doesn't cut a blind corner on a steep hill right in front of a train tunnel. It provides secondary access that has enough room for a sidewalk that's safe. Um, and so this, uh, the point is of having the area wide study is that it, it presents um, uh, the full picture of what we need. So, um, so maybe when we have that full picture, okay, so the, the town, we need some public investment in the roads, the connectivity, uh, the utilities, and then you know, some of the properties and the ideas for the properties, they're available and more attractive to the, the private investment in the next level. So, so, that, so that's sort of why I wasn't talking a lot about those pieces, Kathy, because I think that what we're, what we're doing here, coming with the, um, the end use, what people want to see, make sure that whatever we're doing has community support today um, in, in blending those pieces. Okay. Uh, the Abenaki stone carvings are intriguing. People find them interesting. I read about them everywhere, but getting down to see them is so hard. Um, could we somehow think about that? That's an attractive asset, and but it's an inaccessible one. So I'd love to brainstorm ways that we can make that um, archaeological um, marvel actually um, more accessible and also market it to potential visitors. Right. If I can just say something about that. When I was doing work down at the chamber, we had people stop all the time to find out how to get down there. Yep. Uh, we were visited by some of the Abenaki tribe and yep. were told that they would rather prefer it not be marked and not have a, a large trail because that it, it's a sacred ground for them and they just didn't want people to be down there okay. on a regular basis. So I don't know how you would get around all right, well, maybe that's know, not a the, possibility. Keeping that in mind and, and yep. still having that. Well, I, I think an opportunity there is to do off-site interpretation and recognition right. of the Abernaki history and that we're on Abernaki land. But I, yeah, I, I agree with Deborah a lot over the history was they didn't, they consider that a sacred site and they really don't want people looking, but we could still give a lot of credit and interpretation off-site to that. And some of that would be at the Waypoint Center and could be down at the park and stuff too, so. Because there, there was a piece in the paper today about what's happening in Brattleboro. Rich Holsuch, you know him, he's an Abenaki rep. Yep. And they're, they're opening up kind of a historical interpretation center because that, the, where the retreat farm is right. was a really special place where the tribe spent a lot of time um, fishing and it was just a, a key right. gathering, gathering point. And they seem to be really moving on it down there. Yeah. Well, and there could be an app, you know, an opportunity for a satellite concept of that here where they thought it might be appropriate to tell the story, but not necessarily going down to the site to look at the actual carvings. 
Right. Yeah. It sounds great. That's exciting. Could I ask people um, online who aren't, aren't talking to mute their mics? Thanks. Uh, yeah, I totally agree. And I, I, I have talked with Rich a little bit about this project. Um, he's aware of it. And yeah, we need to really get their input about what would be appropriate, but it's a, it's a wonderful asset one way or another, whether it's a interpretive piece and maybe a, it, part of that expands elsewhere, you know, there, maybe there's other aspects of the island that they would want to, you know, interact with or, or, or have as part of an interpretive walk or who knows. I see a hand raise, yes. Hi, it's Betsy again. Um, I missed a lot of this afternoon's meeting, but I did hear something that Emmett suggested or commented on. Uh, the slide that showed the zones in, um, you know, you just kind of circled the different zones and it made him think about um, ways to like loops, walking loops. And I thought, if that was possible possible on the rail yards um, and they were interested in having kind of a living museum and having different cars set where, and, and there was an actual walking path that people could walk by and see and there'd be history on the railroads. Um, I'm not sure if that's something that we wanna pursue or, or ask them if they're interested. I think uh, we heard quite a few different ideas about history that are pretty interesting. So that that would definitely be one of them. Very, you know, there's so much rail history here and so many connections to other places that that, that could be really fun. Are there things on the board up there that people might want to never see to to suggest that they go away and not show their head again. I guess I don't hear any. <laughs> Is there anything that people would like to speak up for a little more? Any of the ideas that they'd really like to promote? Not so much that either. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll, I'll say something on that. The, the mixed use village, I do think that would benefit if we could get housing and commercial properties on the island. Great, thank you. Second, good. All in favor? Oh, right, we don't vote here, sorry. <laughs> Um, all right. Well, what we're going to do then is uh, there's a, another phase of the meeting. Uh, typically, it would be called a charrette, where you would take ideas and actually draw them out or think about them a little more. We're not going to go quite that far, but we do have a model. Um, it's not overly to scale or exact or anything like that at this point, but it does allow you to kind of look at the site, understand it a little better maybe, and talk about it. So we're going to move the model over to the middle of the table and we'll get the camera on it. And um, hopefully it'll be another, just a different way to talk about some of the po possibilities for this project. I think one's good. Um, yeah, I, I have a drawing over on the side. I'll take some notes on. But this, um, it's a good opportunity to get up if you want and come around and get close to this. And um, it's, like I said, it's not overly to scale, but you can kind of see, you know, the the square area under the hill. 
towards the camera, rail yards up here, um, Robertson Mill uh, right in here. So this is, you know, it, it's always interesting to see these types of um, projects in a little bit more of a large scale in model form, um, maybe a little more clearly with the, just the, the imagery underneath it. And you can see, maybe you see things that you don't normally see. When we experience things in real life, we run into barriers and oftentimes we don't know that right on the other side of that wall or the other side of the building, there's potential. And sometimes in this type of situation, you can kind of see it. So um, does anybody want to throw out an idea or a observation about something that they see here? Yeah, yeah, if you want to use a mic. Yeah, these blocks represent existing, uh, like I said, they're not overly to scale yet. Uh, we kind of just printed this out, threw some blocks down on it. Um, but one of the things you you know I, I do see is sort of the central open space. You see a lot of land around the edge. You know, obviously there's uses like the rail yard, but um, there's still a lot of opportunities there. How do you get to them? I don't know. That's that might be part of the trick, but I'd like to return to an idea that Betsy had tossed out earlier and I can see a really interesting trail that would cross and, and take you around and giving you lots of Connecticut River um, views and some wildlife and nat great nature connection there, as well as a peek into the, the uh, railroad history. So a, a circumferential trail could be a pretty wonderful thing. Great idea. One thing that we don't utilize because we don't think of it is the rooftops, right? There's a lot of rooftops that have water and fall mountain views, and and they're really underutilized in a lot of in a lot of cases. And there's spaces that could be reprogrammed for lots of different activities. So you can see just based on just the different heights of the different places how that could really be something that could enhance, you know, the waterfront, which is you know a key key aspect. Yeah, and some of the, you know, potential new buildings could, you know, even if you get to a second or third floor, they could be encouraged to make it, you know, part of the design that it's a place people could view or, you know, get up a little bit, see the mountain, see the river, things like that. There's some bald eagles that have been nesting along the river and boy, the word goes out and people's race to catch a glimpse. So some kind of a sanctuary that could be, again, be perhaps visible from a trail, but that would, uh, I think that'd be a big draw. Birders spend tons of money every year in the, in the national economy. How about people online, you Zoomers out there? So does the model help you see anything new or interesting? Guess not. How about here at the table? Other ideas? I'll actually um, mention something uh, Ray Masuko kind of sent to Gary and I. What about uh, murals and painting? Fill up some of these blank walls with art. Yeah. You already have some in the community, right? So why not more? And I know, you know, if you go down to Keene, there's really great examples of kind of the whole mural situation where they came and painted a whole series of them. What do you think, Gary? Should we, should we force them to stay and t divulge their ideas or should we release them? Does everyone feel like they talked out anything? <clears throat> Whoops, sorry. Everyone feel like they talked out everything on their minds around, um, 
uh, opportunities, exciting uses for um, uh, for the island dairy and the under the hill? Anything that's ever crossed you? Oh, go ahead. Yep. I'm sorry, this is Robert again. I, I kind of lost track of the conversation because I had to do something else, but um, about the model thing. But no, I think public art's an opportunity. I think it's a big discussion uh, that comes with it. Maintenance, development, who does it, you know, and different things. But, uh, you know, definitely could be part of a, a big conversation and an attraction. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, I guess Betsy. I have I have one more thing. Um, so I I just thinking as a boutique hotel owner, which I am not, but as a boutique hotel owner, where would my option be if I wanted to build a boutique hotel? I think at this stage, there's there's certainly many opportunities there, but just the idea that that's something that we want. Um, and then that uh, voting aspect that we, we couldn't do because we're not in person, but we're figuring out how to get votes and all the ideas, just getting the idea in there and then letting the uh, professionals, I mean, that's what Mark does as a landscape art architect, figure out the, you know, the best sites for that, what it might look like. So when they come back for the next meeting, we have drawings like this that show your boutique hotel somewhere. And, um, and then we have some visuals to work with. Perfect, thank you. So maybe that's a good segue to next steps, which is really us taking away all the ideas and information and discussion and, you know, kind of improving the mapping that we looked at, filling in some of the gaps that we heard about and starting to develop concepts, starting to think about what makes sense. And like I said before, we, a lot of times we do that with a focus and kind of see where that leads. And then a lot of times we take those and break them down into favorite parts and start to mix and match. Um, depending on where we are on the, in the process, uh, we will have another public meeting and get people's input on those ideas. So um, I don't know if that'll happen in mid-July or you know somewhere, somewhere along the way, not too far out, we'll come back with drawings and ideas and, and sort of typical images of, of other places that do similar things so that people can see in plan and you know, kind of through imagery what some of the bigger ideas are and help us kind of understand what might be favored and what's not. Uh, one point I'd like to bring up is the Depot Street Bridge. The select board is contemplating a very uh, significant investment in the Depot Street Bridge. One of the options being considered includes a pedestrian bridge that would replace the existing uh, bridge that dates around 1904 and replacing it with a bridge parallel to the railroad trestle, which would um, provide access to the island at the far edge. Um, that is a big piece of infrastructure. The decision has to be made relatively soon, I'm sorry to say. Um, but I would love to have that thrown into the mix. And if you guys could talk to VTrans, they've got, um, we, we've had maybe three or four iterations with them. And I think it would be helpful for you to know that that's um, a, a decision we made on that probably in the next three weeks. Okay. Yeah, we definitely know that that's out there. Uh, we could talk to VTrans about what they're thinking about it. And we can also, you know, think about how in, in different de design scenarios, how different situations would be beneficial to that idea. So yeah, we're happy to do that. Something that hasn't <clears throat> come up in the bridge discussions that um, uh, as I'm here and all of the, the plans for um, uh, canal walkways and different paths and um, that we can't really put a structure over the canal, um, uh, but if the pedestrian bridge, um, the, the attraction people had for keeping Depot Street Bridge as pedestrian bridge of flowers is that it's such a wide surface. You could have tables and sit there. I'm wondering if they have, they're proposing an iron truss bridge, if, they, if those ever, still truss, if those ever have little balconies on them. So even though there's a, a pedestrian walkway, there could be a little overlook on the side of it that um, 
uh, that you, you sit at. You have a bench or a couple little tables or something. There. Right. Oh yeah. Oh nice. There you go. Really? Yeah. That that would be that would be great. I wonder if we could um, ask VTrans to consider that. <laughs> okay, let's do it. If we're paying for it, if we're gonna... okay, let's do it. All right. Well, I definitely want to thank everybody for their time and their ideas. And I know Gary will be sending out some follow-up information, maybe some, some questionnaire type stuff. But uh, it's been really great to hear from everybody. So thank you. Thanks, everyone, for your participation. Thank you. Feel free to write with any Thank comments, you. questions, clarifications. Comment card. Right. <laughs>